It's a girl. Meethi si hasi ka. Sir, baat lo ye hissa. Mahal kyu hai? Five hundred two mein. हर बच्चे के जन्म के साथ जन्म लेती है एक उम्मीद जब वो जुड़ती है लाइफ सेल कम्युनिटी स्टेम सेल बैंकिंग प्रोग्राम से लाइफ सेल होप इज लाइफ हाय विनेश ओवर टू यू यू कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर राइट नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल हु हैव टेकन आउट टाइम to be present here for this webinar organized by Life Cell International Private Limited. My name is Vinesh Arvind Mandot and I am the senior product manager here at Life Cell. Life Cell is India's first largest and the pioneer uh, in the field of stem cells banking apart from venturing into different businesses like diagnostics, wound care, cosmetics to name a few. So the purpose of today's webinar was to educate empower and enlighten a lot of expected parents who have to take an important decision amongst a lot of other decisions when a baby is uh, to be born is an important decision whether to bank the baby's umbilical cord blood stem cells Uh, with mixed opinions online on the internet and lack of information lack of awareness a lot of times people miss out at this once in a lifetime opportunity and we hope that people who are a part of this webinar by the end of this webinar you would be in a position to take an informed decision regarding storage of your baby's precious umbilical cord blood stem cells uh can i get a quick confirmation if i'm audible to everyone perfect thanks him thanks all right so with uh, your due permission let's start with our webinar as we proceed uh, please don't forget to write down your queries in the chat box i would be attending all the queries after my presentation is complete All right so let's get started before i begin my formal presentation on behalf of life cell and our entire team we would like to heartily congratulate all the expected parents who are experiencing one of the most joyous moment called pregnancy i hope that in the next 20 25 minutes with the information and knowledge that i would like to share with you all you would this would add more value uh, to your entire journey of welcoming your little one so what's the purpose of today's meeting let me introduce that we all have a uh, a small first aid kit or certain basic medications that we keep at our home right we would keep medicines like uh, paracetamol we would keep some cough syrups bandages thermometer uh, some ointments uh, why do we do that well let me ask you a question all these medications are easily available at the nearest chemist shop i'm sure most of you all would have a pharmacy store which is 5 to 10 minutes away from where you stay right whenever the need arises you could walk to these chemist shop and pick it up from there right then why do we still keep these medicines handy with us in fact even when we travel outside our houses we carry a small pouch of medicines with all these uh, uh, you know medicines uh, etc well the answer is pretty simple first of all in case of an emergency this becomes your go to kit second having access to this means the patient who requires it gets immediate access to this medicine so that treatment could start now since you're starting it immediately it saves a lot of time money and at the end of the day by just keeping this there's a lot of peace of mind 
and mind you you would have experienced that a lot of times you may not require it but someone else could need it this is exactly the reason why responsible parents today in india are not throwing away their baby's umbilical cord in the dustbin but safeguarding it in a bank like life cell because it is similar to storing these medicines or first aid kit so that in future in case any need arises stem cells are nothing but like keeping a medicine handy even before any uncertainty arises so why do we need to store them today well at the core of every human being is a emotion to stay to live long but at the same time we all want to stay healthy isn't it now whenever we feel sick uh, we go to a doctor and they generally would uh, prescribe a certain medication some basic medication at times some antibiotics etc right now that comes under the pharmaceutical side of uh, treatment but you would agree that not all the diseases that we know can be treated by just popping up a medicine for example let's say someone uh, meets an accident or someone is diagnosed with a uh, appendicitis or some kind of a hernia or tumor then the doctors would opt for another course of medication which is called surgery or uh, in common terms uh, operation now think about this all the medical conditions that has been discovered till now can it be treated by simply taking these out uh, otc medications or undergoing surgery well the answer is outrightly a big no so as we all want to live a long and healthy life today as we speak we need to have access to modern medicines and stem cells is nothing but that modern medicine now imagine how beautifully the stem cells which have been left over after your baby has been developed which we will discuss in the coming slides it is packed naturally in this umbilical cord which has been the lifeline between the mother and the baby and all that you have to do is rather than throwing it in the dustbin you should preserve it in a stem cell bank for the potential benefits that we are going to speak about so a lot of times expected parents and families think that what are stem cells i have never heard about it well you all seen this if you recollect the first sonography scan uh it's one of the most joyous moment um i have experienced it myself and it's one of the most joyous moment where the doctor shows you as you can see on the left hand side of the screen a small ball of mass on the on that monitor it confirms your pregnancy it gives you information whether you are expecting a single child twins or triplets and that moment is really joyous now what you saw actually was nothing but a bunch of stem cells which over a period of this beautiful 9 months get evolved and transformed into your entire baby uh, let me give you a very simple example just like how we sow a seed and that would give rise to an entire uh, the roots then the stem comes out then the leaves the flowers and the fruits similarly these stem cells over a period of 9 months give rise to the entire baby the hands the blood systems the brain the heart the liver the kidneys everything and as i just mentioned a couple of minutes back look at the power of nature look at the beauty of god these extra stem cells once the baby is born these extra stem cells are nicely packed i would say manufactured and nicely packed ready made in the blood which is flowing inside the umbilical cord and all that as a responsible parent you need to do is you need to just preserve it now unfortunately when you and me were born this technology was not available at that time in india but thankful thankfully your baby has access to this technology so how do these stem cells work let's understand how do these stem cells work well imagine it's around 6 o'clock right now and on your screen you see a grandmother and a granddaughter imagine both of them are moving in a park 
and they were so engrossed in their conversation that they did not see a big stone which was in front of them and they both fell down and they got a hurt a skin abrasion they go to they go back home they clean it my my question is and at this point of time i would request you all to i would i would request you all to quickly type the type the answer uh, to the question that i'm asking who will heal faster the grandmother or the granddaughter come on quickly in your chat box if you could just type whom do you think would heal faster the grandmother or the granddaughter excellent answer thanks sora thanks salman the granddaughter which means we understand the fact that as the bodies as as we age our body's natural healing potential reduces with age which means when we are young our body's natural healing potential the immune system is much 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 better compared to an elderly person and that's exactly the reason my dear friends we cryo preserve or store these stem cells now for example you and me right now even if our cord blood have was not preserved in a bank we still have stem cells in our body but when you compare these stem cells to the cord blood stem cells the biggest difference is the cord blood stem cells are collected at a tender age of 9 months because it's collected right at birth and they are cryo preserved well a simple example is when we buy some fruits vegetables and dairy products and we want to use them after few days where do we keep it we keep it in our refrigerator right why so that we can use it for a longer period of time it is just the same concept it's just that our regular fridge does not have the potential and capacity to store these stem cells we store it at our laboratory in chennai and in gurgaon in a high tech facility where these refrigerators operate at a temperature of minus 196 degrees centigrade it is such a sub zero temperature or a low temperature that these 9 months old stem cells would continue to be at this age for decades together as you can see on the screen the baby turns 10 20 40 50 70 80 years of age but the stem cells that have been cryo preserved in the bank remains at that age and as you rightly understood in the previous slide younger the cells of our body faster is the healing potential which means when you preserve it today you would always have an access to high quality young stem cells in the future uh for people who understand the tech language this is just similar to the sleep mode in your laptop or computer basically the cells just go into a state of hibernation and they start uh, coming i mean whenever you take it out from these uh, cryo chambers they would start again from where they were which is 9 months old so uh my father is more than 60 years old and when i first asked him have you heard about stem cell transplants his his answer was no i've never heard about it but he was shocked to know that stem cell transplantations have been in existence since the time he was born yes a simple google search will help you understand that stem cell transplants are older than bypass surgeries i'm sure you would have heard about kidney transplants liver transplants bypass surgeries which happens in heart and angioplasties but did you know that these blood stem cell transplants that we are talking about have been in existence for almost 7 decades but still in our country due to lack of awareness people think it's a new concept no as we speak in the last 70 almost 70 years more than 15 lakh patients have benefited or i would not be wrong to say that their lives have been saved because of stem cell transplants because my dear friends stem cell transplants are used where normal medications and surgeries cannot be used and they help to treat patients suffering life threatening conditions now data suggests that every year there are around 90000 transplants that happen in india uh, happen worldwide if i may ask you 
Can you take a wild guess how many transplants would be happening in India every year? Maybe in the chat box, a quick answer. If 90,000 transplants are happening every year globally, how many transplants do you think stem cell transplants would be taking place in India? Maybe you can write down your answers in the chat box. Ten thousand? Well, I would have taken a similar guess. I wish if India reached that figure of ten thousand. Unfortunately, in India, less than two thousand transplants take place annually. Why? Stay stay tuned here for the next three four two four slides, and you'll have the answer. Why even after 70 years of this transplants, this treatment being available in our country, in India, why the number of transplants are so less? Meanwhile, what's the good thing is that today more than almost 100 plus blood related medical conditions are approved both in India and also globally. Now, I understand you are experiencing one of the joyous moment and I do not wish to... Uh, use uh, the terms of medica uh, certain diseases or disorders which would create some discomfort. But uh, just to name a few, these involve uh, most forms of blood cancers, severe blood disorders or anemias like thalassemias, aplastic anemia, Fanconi anemias, um, a lot of metabolic disorders which are genetic in nature and a lot of immune disorders. For example, severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. It's a disease where a child is born without an immune system and there is hardly any chance that it would survive without a stem cell transplantation. But what's more interesting is the investment that as a parent you would make today has rich dividends in the future because there are more than 700 clinical trials which are currently going on human patients across the world for medical conditions which otherwise still date has no other alternative treatment. Just to name a few neurological disorders like cerebral palsy, autism, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy or uh, type 1 diabetes which is a very fo common form of juvenile diabetes, spinal cord injuries, uh, osteoarthritis, uh, Dushin muscular dystrophy and the list is huge which means the future is bright when we talk about these stem cells. Moving ahead, a lot of times in India because it's a preventive healthcare measure. My dear friends, today there is no one in your family, thankfully, who needs a stem cell transplant. So we would consider this as a preventive healthcare measure. And it's, an, it's, 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 it's basically our culture here that uh, we a little relaxed when it comes to these kind of preventive healthcare measures, right? And hence, a lot of parents ask, what is the probability that I would ever require these stem cells? Well, let me cite some examples. We do not purchase a car with the hope that we would ever wish to use the car airbags, right? But I'm sure you must have read the recent news that government of India has made it mandatory that minimum six car airbags have to be have to be installed in a car effective October from this year. How many times do you think we would ever utilize? Uh, we would require uh, uh, the support of or 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 how many times people who drive a car would meet an unfortunate accident where the car airbags would come handy? Very very negligible, but we still need it in case of an emergency. If I have to talk about the fire extinguishers, right? The VVC fire extinguishers being mandatory now in any um, residential or commercial complexes, hospitals. Now, in fact, even uh, buses, trains would also have this. How many times have you used a fire extinguisher yourself or any family, friends in case of a real fire? Next to impossible. But still it is mandatory. When we enter an aircraft, we see this uh, oxygen masks which are being uh, made mandatory in every flight. But if you look at some of the interesting data in the last 40 years, in the US, 
less than 10 people have used it per billion flight hours which means what the possibility of you ever utilizing a in flight oxygen mask is next to impossible but still they are mandatory and similarly the, there are a lot of examples that i can give you but i'm why am i giving these examples is because when you compare this with the probability of using stem cells well researchers doctors and data that has been published say, says that by the age of 70 years out of 200 random human beings one will definitely require to undergo a stem cell transplant now we don't know who that one out of 200 would be but when you compare the utility of car airbags fire extinguishers oxygen masks medical insurances i'm sure my message is clear to you that the possibility of undergoing a stem cell transplantation during your entire lifetime is much, much, much higher and probable compared to the other things which are mandatory. So, my dear boys, uh, friends, stem cell banking is no more a luxury for the elite ones, but it is a necessity for Indians, not for the baby, but for the entire family. We've been speaking for the last 15 to 20 minutes, right? But do you know? That while we are discussing about this important topic today, in the last 20 minutes, four families in India have got a news that someone in their family has been diagnosed with a deadly blood disorder. What you see on in the screen in front of you are real life stories. These are newspaper articles published literature, which clearly shows that the incidences of blood disorders have been on a rise, especially in the last 10 to 15 years. There's a huge burden of blood disorders. A lot of times people feel that, uh, oh, my forefathers never had any of these blood disorders, so our future generations would also never have. No, do not be in this misconception or in this myth. Because most of these blood disorders are sporadic or acquired. We are exposed to zillions of uh, different types of mutations. Our ecosystem is very different compared to what it was for our forefathers, etc. And that is why, as you can see on the screen, most of these blood diseases can happen to children, to adults like you and me at any point of time, even if you didn't have any previous family history. So what does this all conclude to at this point of time? Number one, as visibly seen, there is a huge burden of blood disorders in India. Number two. There's a huge demand and supply gap in terms of the number of transplants that we spoke about that is required in India and the amount of transplants that we are able to do. And because these things are still at a very, very low stage or very, very nascent stage, the transplantation costs are rocket high. Now, in any of the city that you are right now, Today, as we speak, there are more than 100 registered hospitals and uh, in, in not just Tier 1, but even in Tier 2, Tier 3 cities. Friends, 10 years back, you wouldn't have even heard about a bone marrow transplant division in a hospital. I'm talking not just about private hospitals, but even in major government hospitals. But today, even in smaller Tier 2, Tier 3 cities like Jabalpur, Nashik, uh, uh, a lot of cities across the across the country, there are bone marrow transplant divisions or bone marrow transplant, uh, stem cell transplant doctors which are available. So which means what? We have a huge burden of these dust, blood disorders. We have doctors available who could treat these patients. We have world-class infrastructure available in India. You, we don't have to go outside India for these transplants. Then why even after 70 years we are not hearing about these stem cell transplants the way we hear about kidney transplants bypass surgeries and angioplasties well the answer is coming in the next two slides but before that let me introduce a very very important topic one of the myth 
or an incorrect information that a lot of parents have is that if I bank my baby's cord blood in a stem cell bank, one second. A lot of times, a lot of times, uh, a lot of parents have this myth that if I bank my baby's cord blood in a bank, my baby could use his or her own cord blood for all the medical conditions that are currently approved. Well, that's not the case. If you're going to bank your baby's stem cell thinking about that, no. And this is not that Vinesh or Lifecell is saying, this is what doctors and medical institutes, medical bodies in India and abroad say, that the chances of a baby utilizing his or her own cord blood during its entire lifetime is almost like less than 0.04%. Why? Let me give you a very simple example. Let's say there are guests at your home and uh, they've asked for that masala tea that uh, um, you are known for. You put all the ingredients to start making the masala tea, the masalas, the water, the sugars, etc. And now you were about to pour the milk. And that's when you realize that you had not boiled the milk. You forgot to boil the milk and the milk is completely spoiled. Can you still prepare the, the, uh, the tea with this spoiled milk? I'm sure the answer is no. So the only option now you have is Either you'll have to borrow milk from your neighbor or go to the nearest dairy shop and pick up a fresh milk. Similarly, the root cause of most of these blood related disorders, or in fact, 90% of these blood disorders, the root cause of the problem is in our own stem cells. And hence, doctors would not use your own stem cells, which you had banked at birth in a bank or your own bone marrow or peripheral blood. They would clearly ask you to use stem cells from a healthy matching donor. So what, has, what is this matching and how do you identify a potential donor? See, as you are aware, when we need blood, we do a blood compatibility test. Why do we do that? So that uh, only compatible blood will be acceptable in your body. Otherwise, it could lead to fatal complications. Similarly, when we are looking at finding a potential stem cell donor, we do a test called HLA test or HLA matching. Uh, when we deposit a check in a bank, the bank would only clear it if your signature matches the specimen signature, correct? Similar to that concept is the concept of HLA matching. The closer the match between the, or closer the signature between the donor and the recipient, higher is the chances of success for a stem cell match. Now, when we talk about coordinate stem cells because they are so young and naive, minimum 75% matching should happen between the donor and recipient. Let me give you a very simple example. Let's say you want to get enrolled in a particular uh, professional course and the cutoff is 75%, but you have got only 50% would you be getting an admission or are you eligible to get an admission in that particular course? The answer is no. And that brings me to the second myth or misconception a lot of parents have when they take the decision of banking their baby's cord blood stem cells. 50% of all the HLA factors that we are talking about are contributed by the father and 50% are contributed by the mother. And that's where the entire baby is developed. However, as I just mentioned a minute back, that minimum 75% matching is required, correct? But the parents are only 50% matching. And hence, parents cannot use their baby's stored cord blood because of lack of enough matching. I hope this concept is clear with all the parents. Third important thing. Let's say there are 100 Indian patients who all have siblings. And these patients desperately need to undergo a blood stem cell transplant. They all have siblings, real brother or sister. Only 25% out of this or only 25 patients out of these 100 patients would be able to find a match with their own brother or sister. But transplants have to be done for the remaining 75 also, right? And that's why even if you Google this, what I mentioned on the bottom right hand side of this slide, 70% of Indian patients today 
who desperately need to undergo a stem cell transplantation are not able to find a match in their own family it is like finding a very very rare blood group in your own family the chances are very 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 low that you will be able to find it in your own family correct and when you do not find a matching donor in your own family the only option left is to find something outside your family at this point of time you have three columns in front of you i want you to just focus on the first two columns this is the most important slide of my presentation because this slide will give you a clear understanding whether you won't want to proceed with stem cell banking in the right way or you would like to drop this idea of banking your baby's cartilage stem cells so please hear me out correctly families indian families who currently have not preserved their baby's cord blood in life cells community banking registry are struggling and facing two major challenges as we saw in the previous slide 70% of indian patients do not find a match in their own family and hence they have to find sample from outside their family they have two uh, options which are available the option number one is a public cord blood bank what is a public cord blood bank just like how we voluntarily donate our blood in a blood bank similarly a lot of parents would donate their baby's umbilical cord blood stem cells to a public cord blood bank the bank blood bank would process it store it and sell it to a patient who needs it at a fee okay same concept while india is the second largest populous country in the world more than 3 crore babies are born in our country every year it is unfortunate that in india as we speak there is no public cord blood bank available in our country so if there is no public cord blood bank available in our country the only option that indians have right now is to try and find a matching donor in a bank outside india so there are public cord blood banks abroad but here is where the challenge starts now the possibility because our indian dna is very different compared to the um, uh, foreigners the chances of an indian finding a match with a chinese or an african is very 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 remote in fact data suggests less than 10% is your chance that you will ever be able to find a match now all these answers will help you understand why in india still less than 2000 transplants are happening compared to what the need is why there is so much of demand versus supply gap why there is lack of awareness why there is lack of trust in this transplant is because when the need arises because people are not banked their baby cord blood stem cells number one they don't find a match let's say you were one amongst the rarest luckiest of the person that you found a match one unit of cord blood can you take a wild guess one unit of cord blood which is just less than 25 ml friends less than 25 ml 25 ml is one packet of this medicine that you can purchase from a bank and for 25 ml of this medicine this rare medicine one will have to pay approximately 30 to 35 lakh rupees and mind you for adults like you and me one packet or one unit of cord blood stem cells is not going to be sufficient we will require more units you could just multiply finding one is next to impossible finding more when we talk about the second option which is a bone marrow registry bone marrow registries are basically registries where adult donors like you and me can enroll and we can help uh, patients when the need arises by donating our peripheral blood or bone marrow now again in india though there is just 6 lakh donors available in india the biggest problem is that 6 out of 10 donors back out at the last moment because of lack of awareness lack of uh, reach out lack of accessibility second problem is even if you were to find a match again cost is a huge huge constraint for both in, in finding it in india and abroad and the worst thing is just finding the medicine is not enough you need to undergo a stem cell transplant right and there is a huge cost involved in this these transplants are not very very cheap they come at a 
huge cost, almost around 15 to 20 lakh rupees. And none of these public or blood banks or bone marrow registry would financially help you to uh, offset the treatment cost. Now, so as you can understand, whatever we discussed till now, if you take a decision to not bank your baby stem cells, you need to be aware of the risks that you and your family would have by not banking these cord blood stem cells at birth. Low inventory, no inventory, almost no chances of finding a match. And even if you find one unit would cost you more than 30 lakh rupees, plus the financial, to, you'll have to arrange the financials on your own, which would be anywhere between 15 to 20 lakh or more for the hospitalization cost. But the good news is your baby comes with this natural medicine, which you need to bank it at birth. And by preserving your baby's stem cells in life cells, innovative and absolute unique model called the community banking model, here are the benefits that you'll get. So as we understood, we Indians have facing a typical problem, a peculiar problem, and it needs a very, very unique solution. And that's what community banking is all about. I would be very proud to say that it is a solution which is devised by the Indians for the Indians and of the Indians. One you get an access to this inventory of more than 75,000 qualified, consented, and ready to use cord blood units. Life cells cord blood inventory is one of the highest in the world of Indian origin samples. And because these are Indian origin samples, the next question would be, Vinesh, what is the chance that I would find a match? And that is more than 97%. And this is backed on ICMR's data. These samples would be available for access within seven days. And as I said, it is guaranteed because we're not going to wait for anyone's consent. These are already pre-consented, ready to use. Now, while finding one sample was so difficult, here you get such a big assurity. Moreover, the two non-medical problems also get resolved here. One not just the baby, but the entire family, siblings, parents, and even the grandparents, both maternal and paternal, can get access to this registry and take unlimited samples during your entire contractual period, absolutely free of cost. Moreover than that, to offset the treatment cost, whether you are undergoing a cord blood transplant or let's say any alternative uh, transplant like a bone marrow transplant or a peripheral blood transplant, for the baby siblings of the baby and the parents, for the initial 21 years of your contract, for every blood stem cell transplant, Life Cell supports you with a reimbursement of 20 up to 20 lakh rupees for each and every stem cell transplant. It is not just one time that you're going to do. A lot of banks would also talk about this, but it's all a one-time agreement. We'll come to it in a couple of minutes, but ours at LifeCell, it is for each and every stem cell transplant. So the question that I'm putting here is, you've clearly understood the benefits that you will get if you bank your baby's cord blood stem cells in a community bank, and the risks that you would have if you do not bank it, or you choose to bank in a compromised model called the private banking model. I'm going to come to that very soon. See, any, any bank could claim that we have a registry and we'll get you a match. But in today's world, trust is only possible through data. LifeCell is the only company in India which has a unique service called STEM Match through which Within 15 to 20 days, you would get a report showcasing how many matching medicines or stem cells are available in our inventory for a particular uh, family member. They do not require a stem cell transplant right now. But this assurance is the only way a company can claim that they really have a registry uh, of their own. And these are the medicines. One of the report is can be seen at the bottom where this particular baby was able to find more than 40 full match donors and almost around 300 plus acceptable matches, which is around 75% match. So friends, if any company claims that they also have a similar community banking model, here is the only thing that you need to ask. 
proof of concept through a report similar to stem match i'm sure you will understand why people choose life cell over any other stem cell bank moving forward life cell was very very proud to be a part of this life saving transplant wherein uh, this was our first community banking facilitated transplant the girl that you see in the middle of the image her name was batul her parents made one error at the time when she was born which most parents out of lack of awareness and ignorance do it they thought they never had any family history so why should we bank the stem cells and they did not bank it for her own for batul but unfortunately within 3 years of her life batul was diagnosed with a life threatening blood disorder called a plastic anemia and the only option was to undergo a stem cell transplant from a potential donor uh, the on they they went they went ahead for a second pregnancy hoping that the siblings would match but unfortunately as i mentioned few slides back there's only a 25% chance that the siblings could match and that is what happened with batul also her siblings hla and her hla didn't match but one wise decision that the parents did in their second pregnancy was to opt not for a private model of stem cell banking but for a community banking model and that decision turned out to be a life saving decision for batul because as i mentioned this program involves while you are contributing one cartlet of your baby eight or more family members become a default part of this program correct and that's where batul became a part of our program thanks to her siblings cartlet and she required two units of cartlet so the boy and the girl next to batul that you see are actually her donors her, their cartlet was utilized and infused in batul's body and this transplant didn't happened in a tier one city like delhi gurgaon chennai bangalore or hyderabad this happened in a very small location called nashik in maharashtra so as i mentioned in the beginning of my presentation today stem cell transplants are possible even in smaller cities because we have world class doctors great infrastructure available and we are very happy to announce that it's been over 2 3 years now that batul underwent this transplant in 2020 and she is doing absolutely fine i would also like to take this opportunity to to let you know that this transplant happened when india was facing uh, the peak of corona virus pandemic and even in that situation we were able to provide these stem cells in a timely manner at nashik and facilitate this entire transplant which gives you enough confidence that when you choose life cell you would be getting world class services and we would stand by you when the need arises these are some more happy faces life cell is the only company in india which has a published record wherein we have published and we have shown we have given more than 1.5 crore rupees till date to a lot of our clients a lot of banks would claim of giving similar financial assistance but when you ask data no one comes back life cell believes in trust transparency and data and we are the only company who has given more than 1.5 crores to help families come out of these difficult situations while undergoing a stem cell transplantation not only that when you preserve your baby's cord blood at life cell our record speaks about it that your the the sample which is processed at life cell is not only acceptable in india where we have done more than 64 transplants in almost all the best hospitals in our country but even countries like us where finding a getting a visa itself is so difficult our our cord blood products have been accepted not once twice but more than 15 times which speaks volumes about the kind of world class products that life cell would offer to its clients we've also done transplants in singapore thailand and georgia on record we are the highest number of retrievals that have happened in india is through life cell the most experienced stem cell bank before we wrap up 
in the next 10, 5 to 10 minutes, this entire webinar, this come brings me to a very, very important part. Now, if I were you and I evaluate, explore and find best options for storing my baby's cord blood, you will be thrown with two options. One is a private banking model wherein you preserve your baby's cord blood with the hope that the baby could utilize it for all medical conditions like a panacea for the entire lifetime. The parents could also use the baby's matching cord blood. The grandparents could also match and use the cord blood. The siblings would also match. As I mentioned, that's never going to be the fact. And this is why what you see right now in front of you is a recommendation by the IAP, which is the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. Similar recommendation has also been given by the Indian government this year through the ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. What do they say? They say that if you're an expected parent and you're planning to bank your baby's cord blood, if you ask the stem cell transplant experts, if you ask the government of India, if you ask the IAP, the people who understand the science and they perform these transplant, they would clearly say, do not bank it in a private banking model because it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of your hard earned money because the baby is never going to be protected because the utility is so low. And they're never even going to be able to find you samples from abroad for all the challenges that we spoke. So the only option, if you were to go and speak and ask for a recommendation from a stem cell transplant doctor who uses stem cells day in and day out, they would outrightly tell you to believe and bank your baby's cord blood stem cells in a community banking model. If you get time, please visit LifeCell's YouTube channel. And here is a list of almost 20 of India's leading stem cell transplant doctors who recommend only community cord blood banking model over any other one. Let me continue with this. Uh, Okay, so, I'm so sorry, oops. Right, apart from that, we process your baby's cord blood with the most advanced technology through which you would get the highest number of stem cells compared to any other technology available in the world and less of what you don't want, which is the red blood cell contamination. So you would get access to a technology which will ensure that maximum red blood cells are removed from your baby's cord blood because they are harmful and maximum number of stem cells are harvested and stored at the time of storage. Now, since life cell also has in India, there is no commercial banking permitted by the government for another type of stem cells called the cord tissue stem cells or the mesenchymal stem cells. No bank in India has a license to do it. But because LifeCell has another division called the Biologics Division through which we have received the prestigious Noto license. And that is the reason why we are able to claim and support you as our client by offering you this complimentary benefit wherein you would get number one, regulatory approved, Indian government approved mesenchymal stem cells we say guaranteed because unlike the cord blood stem cells these mesenchymal stem cells do not require hla matching they are universal cells and they're absolutely safe in fact during the covid times life cell was one of the only stem cell bank whose product called mesocell has already been approved by the government for a use under a clinical trial for covid patients so which means you will get guaranteed cells and that's what is mentioned in our agreement also or the contract copy. It saves time because these cells are all ready to use available in our labs. Within seven days, these cells will be ready for accession. We would offer you the baby, the siblings and the parents for the initial 21 years up to 1000 million MSCs for each and every stem cell transplant. On an average, you would require anywhere around 200 or 300 million stem cells um, for a therapy. 
we are offering you 1000 million for every stem cell transplant moreover that up to 20 lakh rupees financial assistance would also be offered for the baby siblings and parents for the initial 21 years in case the need arises for a standard therapy so just before we wrap up and i explain you the pricing plan the next last two slides would explain you just a recap of whatever we mentioned about why in the last 19 years life cell has been a pioneer and a market leader with more than 65 percent share and why indians trust life cell as the most reliable stem cell bank number one we are the most experienced in the country number two we are the only stem cell bank to offer you the unique community stem cell banking model number three our collection kit box is the most innovative safe and absolutely maintains optimum temperature compared to the mediocre thermocall kit boxes that are used by other banks we offer you a premier cord blood processing technology very important we offer you a very unique benefit called continued protection against sample rejection for some reason it's a biological sample if the sample was not collected or uh, was collected with very minimal volume of sample your baby's cord blood may not be fit for processing or maybe for storage etc but if you continue the contract you continue to get all the benefits of the community banking model all the community banking qualified samples are stored in two locations geographically distant to ensure that we don't put all our eggs in one basket again I, again an industry exclusive dual site facility at chennai and gurgaon one in north and one in south we would perform free of cost genetic testing on every sample before retrieval so that your transplant physician is confident that they are choosing the best uh, sample out of the registry and a lot of other benefits that we spoke about five simple steps which leads to your decision of stem cell banking number one we need to enroll you could enroll online or you could enroll by getting in touch with our life life cell representative we would be um, helping you or assisting you with a collection kit which you need to ensure is available at the time of delivery of the baby to perform the entire collection uh, in India, a lot of doctors would do the collection themselves or else our paramedic support is always available for performing this collection. Once the sample is collected, we would ensure that the sample reaches the lab in a safe and convenient environment within the next 48 hours. We test and process the sample at our Chennai facility and then it is cryopreserved and smart reports are offered to you, is made available for you on our uh, online portal on life cells website finally the cost now our program default includes a minimum of eight family members this is very very important because this particular investment that you're going to do is going to be not just for the baby but for the entire family in its true sense so to initiate stem cell banking the initial uh, investment that you make which includes provision giving you the kit box enrolling you providing you a crm giving you a collection kit box and uh, arranging for the paramedic shipment of the sample testing processing and the first year cryo preservation sample collection charges if i take the sample collection charges of average 5000 your entire initial investment comes out to be around 3600 rupees per family member of one time investment so obviously if you multiply 3600 into eight family members that's what your initial investment is as i mentioned it is a one time investment for per family member so it roughly comes out to around 29 30000 but do not look at 29 30000 for the baby then it looks a huge figure right but if you divide that 29 30000 initial charges the sample collection charges varies from hospital to hospital. I'm just giving you a ballpark figure as an example here. If you divide that by eight family members, it comes out to roughly around 3,600 per family member, one time investment that you need to make. And after that, every year, just like how we maintain our uh, water purifiers, our uh, cars, bikes, 
uh, laptops, etc. Similarly, to maintain these medicines or these stem cells at a at a uh, particular temperature, we charge you a very minimal maintenance or storage fees, which is around 550 rupees per family member per year. So again, 550 into eight family members would be around 4,500, including GST, and the rate remains the same for as long as you want to store these stem cells. Does it sound costly? I don't think so. It won't sound costly if you would have thoroughly understood the importance of why taking this decision right at birth is so important. This brings me to the end of my presentation. And in case now you have any queries or questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Please write down in the chat box and I will answer your questions one by one. If you have any questions, my friends, uh, you can type in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer them. Type 1 diabetes. Okay, so uh, Nargis is asking is type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes or juvenile diabetes is uh, uh, under clinical trial. You could Google this and you'll find that cord blood stem cells, the baby's own cord blood stem cells if preserved at birth, are being evaluated for treating type 1 diabetes. But as I mentioned, it is under clinical trial. Right now in India, there is nothing that is happening. In the US and Australia, there are certain clinical trials that are happening. Thalassemia, oh yes, Mr. Prashant. For thalassemia major, the only curative permanent treatment is stem cell transplant from a healthy donor. In fact, at LifeCell, we have done so many, uh, uh, we've helped so many thalassemia kids uh, through these stem cell transplants and they're living a happy and absolute uh, a normal life. So please look at type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is under clinical trial. Uh, the baby's own cord blood uh, should be accessible and available. There are currently no treatments that are going on in India, but in the US, there are certain clinical All right, so I think uh, if there are no more questions, thank you so much once again, all of y'all. Okay, uh, Suresh, Mr. Suresh is asking, can I pay for first year now and after one year, can I extend? Oh, yes, uh, you can definitely do that, Mr. Suresh. Uh, that is our annual plan wherein you need to make the initial payment. And after that, every year on your baby's birthday, you need to pay around 4,500 rupees for as long as you want to continue storing them. Yes, yes, amount is the same online or offline. They are just two modes of facilitating the enrollment or onboarding process. Amount is the same where, wherever you would like to enroll. All right. So uh, thank you so much once again for being a part of this webinar. I hope the promise or commitment that we had given at the beginning of the presentation or the webinar, uh, we live up to it. We were able to give you the information and clarity that you see. Uh, uh, my request would be, uh, please get in touch with LifeCell through our local representatives, which are available in your birthing center, or you could uh, reach out to our uh, contact center through uh, our toll-free number. Uh, whatever mode suits you, please get in touch, get your queries resolved, and do not miss out at this golden opportunity, which is available only once in a lifetime to bank your baby's stem cells. Thank you so much, and we wish you all a very happy and safe pregnancy journey, and uh, happy parenthood once your baby is born. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinish, for your uh, wonderful session. Thank you.
कतली सी खुशी का शेर मीठी सी हसी का सर बांट लू ये हाँ लड़की हुई पांच सौ दो में हर बच्चे के जन्म के साथ जन्म लेती है एक उम्मीद जब वो जुड़ती है लाइफ सेल कम्युनिटी स्टेम सेल बैंकिंग प्रोग्राम से लाइफ सेल होप इज लाइफ